Look at me. Do you see a sophisticated system? 3.8 million years of nature's engineering to learn from. In the natural ecosystem, everything that lives circulates forever. How? It all started with a crazy question. Can we create textile fiber by using nature's own process? By learning from the master nature herself? By imitating nature, like how a spider produces its web? That question led us to invent a brand new way of making fiber out of wood and waste. A revolutionary natural fiber, the first of its kind. 10 years of scientific research, thousands of trials and vigorous industrial scaling has led us to this moment. Benefiting the entire global textile industry with a process so clean and pure with zero harmful chemicals and dissolving. Zero, no compromise. Because all t-shirts should be produced with only one liter of water. No harmful chemicals, side streams or waste. Just like nature designed it. We produce a textile fiber that breathes, lives, endures, warms over, over and over again and again. That's the way nature has always done it. Spinova. Net. Testing, testing. It's so great to be here. I'm here to talk about how to bring a transformative innovation to the market what to do, what not to do, and the role of partnerships. My name is Lotta Kopra, Chief Commercial Officer at Spinnova, and previously a founder and an entrepreneur in the digital space. Let's go. Spinnova is a transformative textile innovation. We are the only company in the world that can produce textile fiber out of many different raw materials, completely with no harmful chemicals or dissolving. Our vision is to transform the raw material base of the entire global textile industry. And this is a tall order for a small company, but we do think it's possible to achieve. Firstly, we have a game-changing innovation at hand, and secondly, we have the strongest partners standing alongside us. Today is about partnerships, so I put here in the deck a few of our key strategic partners we work with. We work with these companies, these amazing companies, uh, very uh, concretely and strategically. So their technical teams, commercial teams, together with our technical teams and commercial teams, to build together a product that suits their needs and also is optimal for the environment. We work with Adidas, the Norwich Face, H&M, Echo, Bergans, Marimekko, Icebreaker, and many others that are not public today. These companies are very special in the way they are committed in sustainable innovation. And also good to mention that we have very strong partnerships also in the area of raw material, technology and finance. Okay. What's good to mention in this context is that every great success looks like an overnight success to the outside. Same for Spinnova. It is, however, everything but an overnight success. The Spinnova journey began 11 years ago, when our co-founder Juha Salmela was visiting a lecture series in Oxford. And the lecture was about how a spider is spinning the spider web and the similarities between the spider silk protein and nanocellulose. And Juha, with his co-founder, Janne Poranen, got very excited about this idea. And they combined this idea with their expertise in rheology, a field of science that studies how particles flow in a matter. And eventually they asked a simple yet massively radical question. Could textile fiber be produced? completely with no harmful chemicals. Let's see if this works. If it was possible, the world would look very different. 
there would be no land drying caused by the textile industry. There would be no chemical heavy textile dye. There would be less social problems and there would be no microplastics caused by the textile industry. And this sets the scene for our talk today. Something obviously needs to be done. And I can be humble yet proud to say that Spinovat can take a role in tackling these global challenges. We can do our part and we can do more. Today, Spinova can produce a textile fiber with zero harmful chemicals and with very little water. We have a mechanical process that enables our fiber to be very natural. It looks and feels like a natural fiber and it is fully circular, meaning it can be grinded into new fiber again and again. As raw materials, we can use many different waste streams that we are very proud of, textile waste, agriculture waste, like wheat straw. We can use leather waste, like we do today with Echo. Even food waste, like potato peels. And of course, certified wood. Our target is to produce one million tons of textile fiber annually in 10 years time. This corresponds to 4% of the global cotton volume. And it is a good start. We are here to disrupt this industry. But we can't do it alone. That's why we have built a strong network of partnerships in, in raw material, in brands and in technology. And now uh, I'll be sharing a few concrete secrets from the battleground. How is Spinnova able to um, commercialize this innovation together with partners? We have five learnings. Here the first one. You don't need to be unique at first. For an innovator, it is an absolute dream to build something unique, a unique product, something that no one has built before. It's something amazing and different. So for an innovator, it is a big dream to build a unique product. But for somebody who is trying to sell the product, it is a total horror, like me. Why? Let's take the textile industry as an example. The textile industry is very stable uh, and traditional. It has seen very little actual material innovation in the past 100 years. It's regulated, it's built to minimize risks. And I can ensure you that it's not a good position to be in to sell something that no one has seen before, no one has used before. So that's why to build a product market fit in the textile industry, you need to at first be a copycat. You need to uh, build something that is easy for material experts to understand, easy for designers to design, easy to, to buy for sourcing. So you want to be a copycat, you want to build a substitute for something that ex exists in the market today. How did we do that at Spinova? We needed to improve our focus. We needed to put aside for a while all the great things that Spinova is and all the ways that our technology is superior. And we took one product area that had high demand and good technical fit. And for us, it was the cotton. So we built a product, a blended product that could substitute cotton today. That would be easy for designers to design, easy for material experts to understand, easy for sourcing to buy. And it's easy for them to understand. Uh, it's, they know what cotton is like. This is like cotton, just way more sustainable. So the learning here is your innovation might be unique, but you want your product to be a substitute initially. Learning number two. So initially, you don't want your product to be unique, to hit the market fast. But later, if you want a lasting sticky position in the value chain, or even to disrupt an industry, you want to be unique. So when you enter a mature market as an innovator, there is really only one luxury you have, and that is that you can 
define the market for yourself. You can slice and dice the market the way you want to create your competitive field. Everything else the customer decides on, really. So to disrupt an industry, you need to be better, much better, or cheaper. And you have a massive work ahead of you to launch a new value proposition to the market. And there's the big, big question about do you want to launch a new category or do you want to be a part of an existing one? So in practice, a big enough share of your market's early innovators need to feel that you are the holy grail in the industry. They need to be so convinced that they are ready to take action. And again, companies don't create categories, customers do. So my coaching would be that even if you have a radical technical innovation, you might want to reconsider launching a totally new category. Oftentimes it is best to define your market so that you are the leader of an existing category. Secret number three. Big fish is not always the best. The innovator's destiny is shaped through its partners. Partnerships are the single most important thing defining an innovator's position and reputation in the market. And in, as an early company, it's easy to get distracted by big shiny brands. You start to look at their brand appeal and you start thinking how great their logo would look like on your website. But you need to look further. For Spinova, we have had a very explicit uh, partner criteria from the start. Most companies prioritize based on two criteria, market opportunity and technical fit. First one is obvious, the second one tells us how well are we able to fulfill the customer need and how easy and uh, quick it is for us to fulfill that need. Is it risky? In addition to these two, there is a third criteria that we look at and actually every pre-commercial company should look at. It's the most important one for us. We call it commitment. We only partner with companies who believe what we believe. The value alignment is a critical go-no-go -no -go criteria for us. And if this one is a yes, and only if, then we also look at two additional criteria within the commitment box. One being that does this company have ability to innovate? So do they have in-house R&D? Do they have people, processes and tools and budgets to work with a company like us? Then we also look at their commitment in us as a company. This also has many, many ways to do it. Oftentimes it, for example, manifests in their willingness to co-brand with us. So we want to be the ingredient market in the end product to be visible for the consumer. So the learning here, be selective on your first partners, prioritize based on values, commitment and agility initially. Secret number four, let your innovation benefit your partners first. The way I see it, is that by focusing initially in contract negotiations, in bargaining the best terms from the get-go, you might end up optimizing your numbers in short term. But if you are there for the big game, if you want to have a defendable, great position in the value chain or even to disrupt the global industry, you should first focus on being very close to your partner and create value for them first. In my opinion, if you succeed in creating massive value for your partners first, you will find yourself in the middle of a leading alliance in your industry and suddenly everybody wants to play with you. In practice, know your value chain and identify the party there that is the party of power and influence. For us, typically a fiber producer would sell upwards in the value chain to fa fabric or material producer. Uh, our product is both the fiber and the fabric and we sell always directly to brand owner. 
In addition, we also want to have a very strong ownership in the raw material box. Focus on creating value for your partners first. Secret number five, the most important one. Trust is your only currency. We believe in extreme transparency and honesty. One could even say that we believe in the Finnish type of brutal transparency and honesty. You Finns in the audience know what I'm talking about. So in the early days, it's not really about building awareness. It's about building trust. It's not about selling your product. It's about creating pull. So building partnerships is always between people. So in a way, you are never selling to a company. You're always selling to a person. Here is an example stakeholder pay base of ours at an example customer and how it evolves over time. So first there is innovation team, then sustainability materials, and later on a whole bunch of different organizations and functions that are in your stakeholder reach. First you are under the radar, you have a handful of people, and then later you have tens and later hundreds of people within just one partner. And all of these people and different stakeholder types have different questions and worries about your product. So your message needs to be very sharp. And also the message needs to have enough depth to fulfill all the demands and requests, data requests that each and every party has. And let me tell you that these people have a lot of appetite for knowing more about your product. So what's critical here is that uh, you first identify and you find your true fans within this stakeholder base <clears throat> and first create trust amongst them. They will be your ambassador or ambassadors all the way to the big scale, so a very crucial audience. These were our five secrets today. It's not rocket science nor complex but it is demanding. It requires guts, and trust is the biggest asset you have on the way. My name is Lotta Kopra. Thank you. <laughs>